This is practical tutorial number 16 on competency 16, the Q code and the phonetic alphabet. Let's have a look at the competency number 16. Q code and the phonetic alphabet and use of plain language. The method by oral questioning only the candidate should be asked the purpose of the Q code and the phonetic alphabet, including the importance of a standardized codes and signals over radio. The use of slang is, is undesirable. Note, while not preventing such use, it is not a requirement for the candidate to use the Q code or the phonetic alphabet in any part of his, their assessment. So you don't have to know the Q code or the phonetic alphabet, but you do have to know why they're there. The performance criteria in the last column, the candidate provides a knowledge of the existence only of the Q code and phonetic alphabet, a knowledge of their purpose. Candidate demonstrates by answers the importance of the use of plain language in radio communications. Well, let's talk a little bit about plain language first. Slang terms, if you want to know someone's name, ask, say to them, what is their name? What is your name? My name is Ron, what is your name? Slang terms such as handle, personal, and all of those really don't have any place in amateur radio as it's a very poor radio procedure. You might understand that slang, but when you're communicating with a, another amateur station in Germany or Japan or some other European country, their first language is not English, and if you use slang like that, you're going to make it difficult for you to be understood and the whole amateur radio experience won't be as good as it would be if you simply used plain language. The purpose of the phonetic alphabet, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, etc. is to improve the clarity of communications, particularly under difficult communication conditions. If a person at the other end of a radio circuit is having trouble getting the name of your location, you can spell the name of your location phonetically. If they're not hearing your call sign correctly because of noise, you might give them your call sign phonetically and that gives them a much easier chance of getting your call sign down correctly if there's a bit of noise on the radio circuit. The Q code was originally designed for telegraphy only. It's been incorporated in radio telephony now and the Q code makes communication simpler by addressing a whole sentence in simply three letters. QDH question mark, what is your location, etc. The Q code improves the quality and clarity of communications and to a degree it also overcomes language barriers because both the phonetic alphabet and the Q code are international codes. And if you said, for example, to a foreign radio operator, my QDH is, he would hear the QDH and know straight away that the word following after the is is the name of your location. And if he didn't get it correctly, or if he couldn't spell it properly, he might come back to you and ask, could you spell that phonetically for me? So that's the Q code and the phonetic alphabet. A very rudimentary understanding of their purpose is all you need. You do have a full copy of the Q code and, and, well not the full Q code, the full Q code is very big. But you have a subset of the Q code in your foundation manual and you also have the phonetic alphabet. But you do not have to commit them to memory for your assessment. Just know their purpose. That's Comedy 16. Cheers for now. This is Ron VK2DQ.